Hey everyone, Nurse Mike here from SimpleNursing.com. Today we're breaking down SIADH and diabetes insipidus. The key differences made simple. But before we jump into it, for my Simple Nursing members, let's make sure this info actually sticks. So grab your SIADH and DI study guides from your membership and be sure to follow along. This will make it way easier to remember all the key points. All right, guys, let's wrap up SIADH versus DI. Syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone versus diabetes insipidus. So in SIADH, we stop urinating and we get SI, soaked inside with low liquidy labs. And in DI, we diuresis or basically drain a lot of fluid. So we get DI, dry inside, with high and dry lab values. Guys, a lot of NCLEX questions come from this. So it's important to know that it all revolves around ADH, the antidiuretic hormone. Created in the posterior pituitary at the base of the brain, our memory trick for this guy is ADH, adds to H2O. This guy keeps fluid in the body and not in the potty. Now the synthetic form of ADH, or basically the man-made or drug version, ends in pressin, like desmopressin or vasopressin. Guys, it's given to decrease urine output and also helps to press up the blood pressure. Look, I just think it's pressing on the vein. But caution, headaches are a huge priority since ADH adds to H2O. Guys, our labs end up low and liquidy, leading to hyponatremia, that low sodium, below 135. We're talking swelling in the brain, leading to seizures and then to death. So the big NCLEX keyword here is headaches, guys. Write that down or even confusion or agitation, usually those are the first signs of that low sodium, hyponatremia. So let's break these down one by one. For SIADH, just think C for Spanish, which basically means yes. So yes, ADH, yes, add the H2O. So the body gets really soaked with fluid. Now guys, this is super simple. Just use our memory tricks, the seven S's for SIADH. Our first S is for stop urinating. We get low urine output, and this means sticky, stinky, and thick urine. This means keyword high urine-specific gravity, guys, over 1.030. This means we've stopped urinating, so whatever does come out is thick like paste. Now think SI for soaked inside or basically swollen inside. We get really low liquidy lab values with keywords here hypo or low serum osmolality, and hyponatremia or low sodium. Guys, always huge NCLEX favorites. Write those down. So again, the NCLEX is going to try and trick you. So SI, think soaked inside, guys. Low liquidy labs. Keywords again, decreased blood serum osmolality and decreased sodium below 135. Next S is again for our NCLEX favorite, guys. Sodium that is low. I'm going to keep on harping this because the NCLEX loves to test you on this. So swelling in the brain with cerebral edema and seizures and death. Often the earliest signs, big NCLEX keyword here, guys. Headache, headache, headache. But also confusion and agitation. Next S is again for seizures from that low sodium. So guys, we set up seizure precautions for SIADH with that low sodium, huge priority. Next is for severely high blood pressure. Since SIADH, we stopped urinating and now we're swelling inside, guys. Blood pressure will be up as well as edema will be up. Which brings us to our last S, guys. We stopped urinating out, so we stop fluid in. Now that's pretty simple, right? But the key word here, guys, is that we add salt to prevent those seizures from that low sodium. So we'll stop all IV fluids, except if we need to give that 3% saline or that sodium chloride via IV. And lastly, we can always give diuretics to drain that slowed, fluid-filled body. But guys, that didn't even come up once throughout the 10,000 NCLEX questions we surveyed to build this script. So diuretics are probably not a main intervention here. Okay, now switching gears here, let's jump over to DI, our diabetes insipidus. So the memory trick for DI is die, ADH, die. Guys, ADH is dead, so we can't add to H2O. 
the body ends up urinating like all over the place, peeing like a big circus elephant. So guys, this is super simple. The patient in DI will just look very dehydrated and literally the exact opposite of that swollen SIADH. So guys, remember the seven Ds of DI. So DI, think diuresing or draining fluid with high, high urine output. Guys, up to like 20 liters at a time. So we get very diluted urine. So very low, low specific gravity. Less than, keyword here, 1.005. That's a huge NCLEX term. We saw this a lot. So think about all that urine coming out, guys. What's happening on the inside? Well, yeah, you're getting dehydrated. So high and dry labs. So guys, think DI for dry inside. High dry labs here. So NCLEX keywords, write these down. Hyper or high blood serum osmolality. And hypernatremia, that high sodium, over 145. Guys, big NCLEX number right there. Again, they're going to try and trick you. So, again, DI, dry inside, high and dry labs. Very thick, pasty blood with increased sodium and increased blood serum osmolality. Basically meaning you're going to have really thick blood. Now, the next few Ds, we drink a lot of water, guys. Patients are going to have increased thirst. You also have dry, dehydrated bodies with dry mucous membranes and poor, sluggish skin turgor. As well as a big one here, guys, decrease blood pressure. Write that one down. Now, our last D and another NCLEX favorite here, D for desmopressin, our ADH in drug form, also called vasopressin. So, guys, remember this adds the H2O. It's ADH. So, desmopressin, think it decreases urinary output and also increases blood pressure by pressing on the veins. Now, a huge caution here, guys. It causes death, again, from that low sodium. So remember, since desmopressin decreases urinary output, it can also decrease sodium, causing deadly headaches, which, again, leads to seizures. Now, the causes of SIADH and DI are very similar. Both revolve around damage to the brain. So guys, anything that puts pressure on the pituitary, since ADH is made in the pituitary, So for DI, remember D for damage to the brain, like tumors, trauma, and even brain surgery. This can cause increased ICP, or basically increased intracranial pressure, which squeezes the pituitary. Now the big difference from SIADH is the NCLEX keywords here, guys. Write this down. Small cell lung cancer and even carcinomas. And also ectopic tumors in the lung that secrete ADH. Our two other S's, again, are from brain damage, so severe brain trauma, like in DI, and even sepsis or infections of the brain, like meningitis and even viral pneumonia. Now, for nursing care in both conditions, guys, we strictly monitor I's and O's, both input and output, basically meaning how much fluid's going in versus how much is going out. Now, guys, this is huge, since it will tell us if the drugs we're giving are working to correct the issue. So a great indicator is NCLEX keywords, guys. Daily weights, not weekly weights. Don't let the NCLEX trick you here, guys. Daily weights, since typically weight gain means water gain, and that really goes for any condition. So guys, if the patient is losing weight rapidly or suddenly, it usually means they're losing water rapidly or suddenly, or they're gaining it, vice versa. So guys, it's no bueno on the NCLEX. All right, guys, that wraps it up for SIADH versus DI. In this next segment, we're going to be breaking down the top four missed NCLEX questions in this segment. So let's do it. What does the nurse expect to find in a patient with syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone, guys? Select all that apply. So before we even look at the options, look at SIADH, syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone, guys. I recommend to always draw out the little figure, the little fat dude. And guys, remember, we stopped urinating, so we have low urine output, with very sticky, thick urine, high specific gravity. Also, if you guys drew out your little fat dude, we have soaked on the inside for SI, guys, low liquidy labs. So sodium's gonna be low, we're gonna have seizures. So let's look at our options here. Number one, we have low blood osmolality. Yes, guys, low liquidy labs. That's what we're looking for. 
Option number two here, increased ceramosmolality. No, guys, that's DI, dry on the inside. We have low liquidy labs. Option number three, low specific gravity. No, guys, in SI, we have very sticky, thicky urine, high specific gravity. Okay, what about option number four? Hyponatremia. Yes, low liquidy labs. And number five is also a yes, guys. Decreased urinary output. Since in SI, we stopped urinating. When caring for a patient in SI ADH, what does the nurse expect to implement? Select all that apply. Guys, the keywords here is SI ADH and expect to implement. So before we even look at the options, guys, the easiest way to tackle this is the S's in SI. I'd recommend drawing a big circle with arms and legs for SIADH. It shows that our patient is really swollen and stopped urinating. So let's recall the S's of SIADH, guys. We stopped urinating out, so now we have sticky, thick urine on the outside with high specific gravity. And guys, since we stopped urinating out, we stopped the fluid in. So we get swollen on the inside, guys, with low sodium as well as seizures. So let's select all that apply, guys. Option number one, IV maintenance fluid, guys. Normal saline? No, guys. We stopped the urine out, so we stopped the fluid in. We don't want to add to that swelling. Number two, fluid restriction. Yes. Since we stopped urinating, guys, we stopped the fluid in. How about sodium restriction? No, guys, we have low sodium in SI, very low liquidy labs. We need to add the sodium. Okay, how about option number four here? Seizure precautions. Yes, guys, remember the S's. We have seizures with that cerebral edema from that low sodium. And how about option number five? We monitor strict I's and O's, guys. That's definitely yes, always for both SI and even DI. And lastly, if you chose number six, you are completely wrong. Measure weights weekly. No, guys, we're measuring daily. NCLEX will try and trick you guys. Weight gain means water gain. Not weekly, always daily. Want more insider tips and tricks for NCLEX-style questions? Well, our Simple Nursing membership has exit prep lectures and thousands of questions covering every nursing school and NCLEX topic. A client with a brain tumor develops diabetes insipidus. Which data should the nurse expect to find? Guys, keywords here, diabetes insipidus and expect to find. Select all that apply. Now, guys, before you even look at the options, always recall what the heck is DI? Well, DI, we're diuresing or draining fluid, guys, high urine output. So we have very diluted urine. And guys, in DI, we get dry insides. So high dry labs. And opposite of SIs, which we get soaked inside, guys, low liquidy labs. So the easiest way to tackle this is to draw a little stick figure and show that he's very dehydrated and DI. So let's look at our options here. Dark urine with high specific gravity. Guys, nope, that is not DI. We're draining out a lot of fluid. We get a lot of diluted fluid with low specific gravity. Remember, SI ADH has the sticky, smelly, thicky urine. Option number two, how about high blood osmolality? Yes, guys, we get DI, we are dry on the inside, high dry labs. How about option three, weight gain? No, guys, DI, we're draining water, so we have water loss. We get weight loss. Option four is correct here, increased thirst, because DI, we get dry, so we have draining fluid, guys, fluid loss. Option five, sodium below 135. No, guys, that's low sodium. DI, we get dry inside. High dry labs, so high sodium over 145. And guys, the last option is wrong. Urine output below 30 mLs. Guys, that's the bare minimum. So we have high urine output, guys. DI is draining a lot of fluid. That wraps it up for our question breakdown. Now, if you didn't know how to break down this question, or maybe you just need another review on DI versus SIDH, we have a little wrap-up video right over here. Thanks for watching. Did you know you can unlock beautifully handcrafted study guides, packed with key points and memory tricks from all our videos? Plus, you'll get access to over 1,200 exclusive videos not on YouTube, all neatly organized by nursing school topic to make that complex nursing knowledge actually stick. 
you'll also gain thousands of practice questions written by current professors and actual NCLEX writers. So for access to all this and more, click right up here or visit simplenursing.com. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Happy studying, and we'll see you in the next videos.